Christmas in June? Ta-da! <laughs> Let's hope it works. Last time aboard Freedom, Sean and I cruised south to Gig Harbor, one of our favorite spots south of Seattle. We not only enjoyed some good old-fashioned Pacific Northwest entertainment on our way there, but we got to enjoy a week at anchor to test out our new lithium batteries to make sure that the installation was truly a success. Great news, we confirmed that all is good and that the decision to move to lithium was a good one and cost-effective for us long-term. If you missed it but are interested in hearing more about our full review and cost analysis, be sure to check it out. Now we're back in Seattle to begin yet another project to help make living, cruising, and working aboard Freedom much easier in the coming months. I'm pretty excited. I mean, our internet right now works perfect. Um, it's all cell based and it's fine around here, but this could be a game changer if it works like crossing borders, going to Canada, going to Mexico, because that's where our cell coverage has a shortage. Um, and when you're in really remote places, so yeah, I think it's going to be pretty cool. Ready to meet Dishy. Dishy? Oh, that's the name? I think so. That's it. That's the dishy? That's the dish. You're okay with something that big and ugly on the boat? Oh, I'm gonna modify it heavily. That's so much bigger than I imagined. Is it? I thought it was like a six by six. <laughs> no, no, no. I thought it was gonna be like a clear. Can you hear me now? No. <laughs> That's so ugly. What's that? That's so ugly. Well, it's not where it's gonna stay. Is it, can it lay flat? Yeah. That's what I'm gonna, I'm gonna modify it so it lays flat. I just wanna see if it actually will get a signal and start working. first turned it on, it said we're outside of our service area, which we are, um, <laughs> and it wouldn't connect. And some, some people say you need to initially go to your service area. Now, roaming's enabled now, so people say it should work outside of your service area. But if you just let it sit for a while, um, like we did, it connected. Well, now it's doing some goofy stuff. It just went back offline. So we'll mm. see. It might, it might resolve itself. It just needs to sit and talk to the satellites for a little bit. I think it's working. There's our download speed. 150 megs. Whoa. Ah, oh, yeah. 190. <laughs> <laughs> it's a blazer. 200, 202, 207, 210, 216, 217. Here's the upload. Oh, you could upload a video pretty quick. That upload's similar to cell. 11, 12, 10? 17, Ooh. so we're landed. 
for 110 bucks a month if this thing works everywhere? Holy moly, it's gonna be a game changer. Now that I've confirmed issue works and has blazing fast download speeds, I can start thinking about how I'm gonna mount this to our pilot house roof so it works while not being such an eyesore. I have an idea, so let's get to work. Hey guys, so you can obviously uh, tell that I'm not at the boat this weekend. I'm actually in my office at work and I'm working on what should be a fun and exciting new addition uh, to the boat. So we are adding uh, Starlink. You guys will recognize this. This is one of the new Gen 2 uh, Starlink satellite dishes. Um, and the project that I'm working on is obviously this is a product that's intended for homes. It's intended to be rigid mounted. Uh, there's a pole that comes out of the back shell of the Starlink and there's motors inside of here. And this dish on your home will sort of move itself until it has a direct line of sight that's unobstructed to a satellite and it'll kind of lock into that position and stay there. On the boat, the boat is always uh, moving. So one of the tests that I wanted to do, this being a phased array antenna, meaning that it can sort of electronically shift its signal uh, to be locked onto a satellite, is I wanted to test to see if this antenna would work in a perfectly horizontal position uh, rather than allowing it to tilt and move around. So I trapped it while it was on the boat and it seemed to work quite well in, in obtaining uh, and staying connected um, with the satellite constellation. So what I want to do for the boat is obviously this isn't a, a very marinized package. There's no mounting holes on the back um, since it has this pole that moves on, on the back side. There's no good way to fix it in that horizontal position that I want to keep it fixed in without mo heavily modifying it. So what I'm going to do, I probably wouldn't recommend trying this at home, but it's gonna be a pretty de uh, destructive process. I'm gonna be cutting into this entire back shell. I'm gonna remove the motor assembly um, from the dish, and then I'm gonna be fabricating a new perfectly flat back plate that'll uh, have a flange on it to prevent water from being able to get inside of the dish. And that new back plate will get 5,200 uh, seal it will get bonded onto the onto the satellite. I don't want any kind of satellite, not a satellite, genius! It's a satellite dish! And the tapped holes in the center clearance hole for the wire are going to match the corresponding holes that we have for our existing KVH pedestal. So the nice thing is this will now mount perfectly flat on our pilot house roof and uh, from the dock or, or from the outside of the boat, you really won't even tell that we have a dish up there unless you were to go up to the pilot house. So it won't be mounted in an unsightly way. Um, it should be, you know, perfectly acceptable to be out in a kind of a marine environment because it'll be perfectly sealed. Um, so pr protected from the elements. And then hopefully being horizontal, uh, it, it'll have less interruptions as the boat is moving or swinging at anchor uh, with regards to staying connected to a satellite. We're gonna put this into a milling machine and we're gonna cut open the back slowly until we can expose the motors and remove them. And then once we have kind of a uniform rectangular opening, uh, we'll then design up um, a plate which can be inserted in to fill that opening and that plate will have the tapped holes on it for mounting. So let's go into the shop and uh, start cutting into this thing. Okay, so I have the uh, dish clamped in a couple of vices on a standard uh, 3-axis milling machine. The flat surface is down and the dome surface is up. Uh, and what we're going to do, the, the motor assembly comes out to about where these, uh, these holes are in the case. So we're gonna have to come down and cut about, about that low uh, in order to take that whole motor assembly out cleanly. So we're gonna come and we're gonna cut across here at this height and then we'll cut uh, back in the Y direction and then in the X we'll cut along the back again and then come back forward. And we're gonna have one big square opening and this whole thing should come off. I don't want to go too deep with my cutter because the uh, the cables go inside of here and they plug into the printed circuit board so there might be some cable 
material that's bundled up uh, against the lid. So I want to make sure that I don't nick the cables with the cutter. So I want to go just deep enough to start breaking through. Hopefully we don't completely destroy this in the process, but there's always that risk. Here we go. Got the uh, back plate off with the motors, so I just gotta disconnect a couple wires. I ran a profile around here to cut, and then uh, I went and hand milled to try to find out at what point this motor bracket was joined to the back cover. So I found that height. So I'm gonna disconnect the wires. I'm gonna blow it out, maybe make sure I didn't damage anything. Then I'm gonna do a cleanup cut, and I'm gonna get everything on nominal size. Once that's done, I'm gonna go and plug this in and make sure it still works before I go through the effort of making a back plate. So the uh, motor plate is off. These are the two connectors. Um, Forget to uh, grab this. Forget which one is which. The white one, uh, the one towards the back, is the communication cable that goes back to the router. And then the black one, the one up here, is the one that powers the motors. Um, so once I get this cleaned up, I'm going to re plug in the white cable, uh, plug it into the router, take it outside, make sure it still works. If it still works, then I'm in business. Uh, then I just need to make a back plate and glue it on, and voila, we've got a panel. It's cleaned up. This plastic is pretty difficult to cut, but um, we got a pretty uniform uh, opening in there. It's a little thinner than I wanted to go, but this will work. I'm going to take it out and test it, make sure it works. And then we're going to design up a flat filler plate with a little bit of a flange that sits on the inside so I can uh, kind of glue it all together with 5200. And then in the center of that back plate is going to be my four tapped mounting holes and a through hole for the uh, communication cable. Okay, the motor cover, I had to cut it apart so I could take this cover plate off to access the wires. The wires are now just in a couple little grommets so I can pull it on through and voila, there's the cable. So I'm gonna hook this up to the panel and hopefully everything works. All right, so good news, it works. It works like a charm. So now I can continue with the next step. The next step is to fabricate that back plate and then uh, bond it together with 5200. And we should have a flat antenna that can be installed on the top of the pilot house roof. Okay, so this is my back plate. Um, I just need to add four tapped holes that'll hold this down to the boat. Uh, but this center hole is where the Starlink cable is going to come up through. This is just a clearance pocket for some of the cable. And then these are some clearances for some of the other high components on the board. So that sits nice on the base. And I'm going to use uh, 5200 to, to join it. And since there's a proud lip all the way around the edge, uh, there shouldn't be any water ingress at all. So I am going to bond that together and then it should be ready to attach to the boat. All right, today is today that the Starlink new flat panel is getting put on the roof. So the KVH dome is coming down along with the pedestal that supports it up in the air. And we're going to drop this into the existing holes of that and bolt it on from the underside of the roof. So I'm just getting access right now to the screws. And the rain begins again when? Uh, any minute. <laughs> we're just kind of dodging rain clouds.
Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video and want to see part two when I confirm if the configuration actually worked or not, you know the drill. Be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell, and share with your friends. We'll see you next time.